the previous video, some of you were a bit concerned about JavaScript's performance because of its single-threaded nature. So I thought, hey, let's poke at that a bit. Jumping right to the point, does JavaScript have threads? Sorta, yeah. I mean, JavaScript itself is single-threaded, but what they have is the Web Workers API, which allows you to run scripts in the background off the main execution thread in an entirely different context. There's a bunch of different types of workers and details here, but we're going to focus exclusively on the dedicated ones since they're simple to understand. Before we dive in, we'll go over some quick example code to get up to speed. So to create a worker, it's as easy as creating a new worker with the name of the script that has the entry point for the worker script. I'll have a second script here, the worker, and the code that runs in here will actually be running in another thread, off the main thread. And we need to define an on message handler in here, and for now, we'll just have it log the messages sent and then post back its own. Now in the main script, I'll declare an on message for the worker object, which will just, again, log some crap in the console. Then we can post a message to the worker using the post message function, and we should be good to go. Running this all, you can see the log statements show up in sequence in the console, and that's the gist of it. So let's speed something up using workers. I've gone ahead and made this dinky little testing harness just to make things a bit easier for us. It'll just take a test, run it a bunch of times, recording times using performance.now. After all that, it'll spew the results into the console, both individual runs as well as the total accumulated time. There's a threaded version too, and that basically does the same thing, more or less. Specifically, we create an array of workers to start, then we have a loop here which sets the on message, and this is where we can look to see if this is the final bit of work to be done. If it is, great. Record the time since we started and throw that into the console. Finally, this last loop actually loops over the work items, doling them out to the workers. In the previous video, we covered comparing C++ and JavaScript, so let's just go ahead and grab the first test we did there, the sum of squares. Recall that this test really just generates a bunch of crap data in an array, then loops over it doing some pretty much pointless math, squaring the values and summing it all up. To start, the first thing that runs is the single threaded version, and we'll do the test a bunch of times. In this case, I just did the test eight times, and that'll just kind of be the baseline to compare to. Afterwards, we can go ahead and run the threaded version, and I'll do that on two threads to start. Your first thought might be, with two threads, we'll go twice as fast. But the first thing you notice is this actually ran slower than the single threaded version. So what gives here? Shouldn't have this been faster? We can try screwing around with the settings a bit more, see if that helps. So if I bump this up to four threads, we see some improvements. I can keep jacking this value up, six threads or eight threads. But we're kind of seeing a pattern emerge here. The improvements all kind of suck. I mean, they suck less and less as you throw more cores at the problem, but these were all outperformed by just doing it all on the main thread. Let's use the performance tab to analyze this a bit more closely. So I've used the reload and record functionality, and it grabbed a couple seconds of profiling data. Now we can look at the main thread here. You can see all the individual calls to test some squares here. They all just kind of happen one after the other, nothing really special to note, other than often it seems to show the first few and then mashes the rest together. But you can make out that the timings are roughly 30 milliseconds per iteration. Over here, this is the threaded test, and from here we can scroll down and find the worker threads. Notice how each of these worker on message calls, we can bring up the code quickly, but there's almost nothing in here. We receive the data from the main thread, run the benchmark, and then post it back. And from the profile, these on message calls take considerably longer than the main thread benchmark runs. We're losing a ton of time here. Notice how the test time only takes about 30 milliseconds or so on the worker. But the whole on message call seems to take a lot of time. And it's in the receiving and then sending the data that we seem to be losing an enormous amount of time. Remember that each of these workers, they don't run in the same execution context that the main thread does. In fact, the MDN docs for web workers specifically state that data passed between the main page and workers is copied, not shared. And that happens using the structured clone algorithm. We're not really digging into how it works, but intuitively, copying data is never free. Although the closer and closer you get to a pure mem copy or just passing a pointer, the faster the copying is. 
Just watch the video on CPU caches if that doesn't make sense to you. So you can intuitively believe that the more complex the data, the slower the structured clone algorithm will be, and thus the slower post message will go. And luckily, I didn't have to actually confirm that myself. I found this website from Surma, a web advocate at Google, and they looked into the cost of post message, so I don't have to. I can just point out their work. And what they found was, the larger and more complex the objects you're copying, the slower things go, to the surprise of absolutely nobody. But it's good to confirm it. And to just hammer the point home, because I have nothing better to do, we reduced this test to one thread, and surprise, surprise, the performance of the threaded version absolutely blew, because we're doing just about everything wrong. The takeaway here is that to go faster in a threaded environment requires a bit more finesse and planning than just throwing crap at another core and thinking it'll all work out. So let's examine a more realistic situation where we'll make things go faster. For a while, I've been doing a series on building procedural terrain, and we do a lot of the mesh building in separate threads. The nice thing about this test is that you're mostly just sending a few simple parameters there that takes almost zero time to serialize, and all the work is procedurally generated. So we can run this the first time using two threads, and what you see right out of the gates is a gain for the threaded version. It's quite a bit faster. Not twice as fast, considerably faster. So we'll take the win. Let's take a closer look using the performance tab again. So what I've done is recorded a profile and we can poke around a bit in here. Look at these on message calls. What you notice is that the tasks seemingly start right away, which kind of jives with our expectation since the deserialization cost now should be really small since we're sending so little data to the worker. But the worker generates the mesh data and has to send it back and that's still costing us quite a bit of time. We can trivially confirm that it's serialization time by sending back a dummy dict. V8 isn't smart enough to optimize that workout, so this will force us to actually build the mesh, but then throw that work away and send back nothing. And what you'll notice from the results is that we're getting a lot closer to the performance being twice as fast being on the workers. So that tells us that we need to kill that serialization cost. The MDN doc showed that the post message function takes two parameters the message, which is transferred via the structured cloning, and then this transfer argument, which is more interesting. This lets us transfer the ownership from one execution context to another. Or in other words, this is a lot like moving a unique pointer in C++. And the upside is that you don't have to copy all that crap over. So this is potentially awesome. The only small caveat is that it has to be one of these specific types that implements the transferable interface, like array buffer. In the code here, instead of passing the results directly to the message parameter, we're going to pack everything into a couple of array buffers. So this block of code just allocates them in some float32 views, packs everything together, and then posts it and sets the transfer arguments. Now we run this and, yay, it's actually really close to the same speed as passing absolutely nothing back. So this is a big win. Quick little aside note. You can also pass shared array buffers back and forth between workers in the main thread, and even read and write simultaneously from the same buffer from multiple threads. Just remember that you need to use atomic operations to mitigate against concurrency issues. We can talk about that in another video. Anyway, that aside, now that we have a lot of the speed, let's start jacking up the threads. So with three threads, we see a good improvement over the two thread case, and another good jump at four threads. At five threads though, we didn't see much, if any, gain, which is a little strange. I pushed this up to six threads and again, nothing. At seven threads, we're still seeing pretty much the same timings that we saw with four threads. But when I bumped this up to eight threads, we suddenly jumped. This is really interesting. We kind of have a performance cliff here. Throwing more threads made zero difference until we hit eight. Using the performance tab, we can take a quick profile and that reveals the culprit right away. So from this, you can see that this worker here is getting two sets of work, and everyone else has to kind of just sit around twiddling the thumb since the amount of work wasn't divisible by the number of workers, which makes sense. If we just jack up the number of work items and play with things, so let's just go with 64, it doesn't really matter, and on the first run, we see around 20 seconds or so, give or take, on the single threaded version, versus 12, 12 and a half seconds for the two thread version. Fantastic improvement almost twice as fast. At four threads, we're still seeing good results, around seven to eight seconds or so. Pretty great. 
At six threads, though, we're starting to see a serious drop off in results, getting somewhere in the six and a half to seven second range, which is a really modest gain at this point. At eight threads, that only just barely nudges us further ahead on top of that. I'm seeing low to mid six seconds depending on the run. I tried running this at 10 threads and this ended up being slightly slower than the 8 thread scenario. And at 12 threads? Well this is pretty clear that not only is this not getting faster, it's actually getting slower. So what gives? I don't have unlimited cores on my CPU, and chances are you don't either. In fact I can look up my specific CPU, I have an i7-4790K. Some of you have said this is a pretty decent CPU, but whatever, it's, a, it's an old one. Looking at the specs, you can see that it has four physical cores, and with hyper-threading it has eight threads. And that correlates really well with our results. Strong improvements up until the four core mark, and then really modest gains after that. I mean, we get gains, but uh, after that, we max out the hardware threads. The problem is, after you've maxed out your threads, you're kind of tripping over your own feet by throwing more threads at the issue. You need to be aware of what kind of architecture you're running on. Now JavaScript does have a way of getting at that. There's window.navigator.hardwareconcurrency, which is the only way of grabbing the number of threads you've got access to. Also be aware that these are logical cores, not physical cores. But after this, if you're doing CPU intensive stuff, you'll probably see similar falloffs. If you're doing I.O., then it's not as big a deal. So anyway, that's a little exploration of JavaScript's threading capabilities. We kind of touched on the surface a bit, played with some of the gotchas and performance foot guns, so hopefully you don't run into the same. Until next time, cheers.